Hi everyone, my name is Coleman Carlisle. Uh, and in this workshop today, we're going to talk about building a resume. So the overview of the workshop is going to be, we're going to talk about the outcome, so what we hope that you get out of this workshop, five tips um, that are going to be really helpful in you developing that dynamic resume, uh, what are some next steps that you can take, and then finally some common questions that you might find um, as you're going through the, the process of developing your resume. So the first uh, learning outcome that we have is that we really want you leaving this workshop today with understanding what are the basics of having a really dynamic resume. Uh, the career competencies involved in this are going to be career management, so being able to articulate what you do um, in the job search process, um, understanding your experiences, understanding what your strengths are, uh, and also oral and written communications, um, so being able to write an effective uh, resume and communicate. So the basic strong foundation of a resume is going to be three pretty basic uh, areas that you're going to find in most resumes. So every resume is going to have contact information at the very top. That's going to be your name, your email address, uh, your phone number, how employers can get con connected with you, and maybe your address. Um, it'll include your education. Uh, your education section will include Florida State University. Uh, it will include uh, your degree, your major, possibly your GPA, um, the dates you attended, and then finally your experience. This will be the bulk of your resume sections. It will include any paid or unpaid, unpaid experiences that you've had, volunteer experiences, student organizations that you've been involved with, really anything you've done uh, while you've been here in college uh, and how you can articulate those experiences through uh, your resume. Um, your resume should also include dates, so everything should have a start date and a finish date. Um, if you're currently still doing it, you can include that it's through the present. Uh, it should be specific and with numbers. So if you're talking about maybe a customer service experience that you had and you say something like, I've worked with customers through this experience, a better resume is going to talk to me about how many customers you work with or how often that you work with customers. Uh, any way that you can quantify an experience really helps the recruiter understand a little bit better of what you were actually doing right there. And then finally, talk about what makes you you. The resume is gonna be your professional uh, representation. It should have the recruiter get an idea of who you are, what you do well, uh, and, and why they might wanna hire you at the end of the day. So pay attention to the details. Um, one way that a resume can look really sloppy is if you're not consistent. Um, so making sure that if you use uh, periods on your bullet points that you use them consistently all the way through. If you use the Oxford comma, be sure you use the Oxford comma everywhere. Uh, if you use FL instead of Florida, make sure you use FL everywhere. Um, and just being consistent because that will make uh, your resume look consistent, it will be clean looking, uh, and it will be really easy for a recruiter to read. Um, you'll want your margins to be either half an inch to an inch, uh, again being consistent, so whichever one you choose and what you've got space for, being consistent all the way around uh, on your resume. Um, you're going to want to use a professional font, so that's your Arials, your Times New Romans. I'd stay away from fonts like maybe Comic Sans, um, that's not going to look as professional. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you use a font that looks consistent and is great throughout. Uh, dates will be on the far right side, um, so this will kind of keep it, I would say, in Word, be sure that you use those uh, right aligns. Um, that's really one way that you can go other, make sure everything's lined up on the right side and it looks clean uh, and professional. Uh, I talked about earlier using numbers when possible. Making sure that you quantify your experiences is really helpful. Again, you want to give employers an idea of exactly what you did and how often you did it. That'll help them have a better idea of what exactly um, you did in those experiences. Finally, you're going to always want to use strong action verbs. Each of your bullet points should start with an action verb. Um, if you're not sure or if you feel like I've used the same action verb over and over and over again, you can get into the career guide that the Career Center puts out, um, and there's a list of action verbs that you can use. It'll help you diversify those and making sure that you're using action verbs throughout your resume that will really make uh, so of the reader understand what you did during the experience. And remember to uh, differentiate your verb choice. So if you did something in the past, be sure to use past tense. If you're currently doing something, be sure to use present tense and be consistent with those tenses throughout your document. So we really want you to showcase the why of your experience. 
Um, so when you're using your bullet points, you're going to really want to focus on what are the transferable skills that you've got and the different experiences that you've had uh, through your, your collegiate time. Um, transferable skills are those skills that you can kind of take from one experience to another. Uh, a lot of times they'll be soft skills, so maybe you're working uh, as a front desk attendant at a company, what are the communication skills that you learn? What are the relationship building skills that you learn? What are the analytical and data information that you were uh, working as that, that front desk attendant? How can you translate that to an internship? Or how can you translate that to a full-time position? So what we really want you to think about when you're developing your resume is what are those experiences that you've had? What are those skills that you've learned that you can take to other places? And how can you articulate that that will connect to the jobs that you're looking for? You're going to want to do that kind of throughout your resume for all of your different experiences. Uh, the next thing you want to think about is how do you make yourself unique? Uh, a lot of folks will be putting resumes in, so you want to make sure that you can talk about what are the different things you did, how, what are the things that you learned, um, and how did you, what are you doing that may be different from the other folks around you. So really take some time to make sure uh, that you're making your experiences uh, be as robust and thorough as you can think, uh, because that will be able to set you apart from other candidates uh, for the process. And then finally, we want you to think about how can you customize your resume to the job that you're applying for. Most employment opportunities, you'll see a job description. You can take that job description and figure out how you can match your resume for that. Uh, I'd encourage you to look for key words. What are some of the skills that they're looking for? What are some of the experiences that, uh, that they're looking for? And if you can highlight that on your resume or emphasize that on your bullet points, that'll be a great way for the employer to know that you're going to be the right candidate for them. So focus on the content, tip number four. Um, what we really want you to do is spend a lot of time thinking about how you can build the most effective bullet points in your resume. Uh, that's going to really tell the employer uh, a lot of information about what you did and why you're the right fit. Um, so encourage you to use PAR statements when you build your resume. PAR statements are essentially uh, P, which stands for project, what is the project that you worked on, A, what are the specific actions that you did, and R, what is the result or outcome of your actions. An example of this might be if you took an experience where you worked in a boutique and sold $5,000 of merchandise, an effective bullet point for that would be uh, your action verb, implemented, your project where you implemented effective customer service and sales technique, and then your result is to achieve $5,000 in monthly sales helping team meet uh, sales quotas. Finally, we'll talk about some of the ways that you can di differentiate your headings throughout and your different sections. Um, you know, for student experiences, you'll see a lot of times um, there will be leadership experiences that you've had on campus. So those are those student organizations that you're involved in, the community service that you've done, um, relevant experience. So that might be internships that directly relate to the experience that you're applying for. Maybe it's a part-time job where you've learned those transferable skills. That'll be a good connection for that employment opportunity, any research experience, so if you've done research in your time or worked with a department to do research, that's really helpful, and any technical skills or uh, skills that are, uh, that you can kind of showcase. When I think of skills sections, you want to include things like languages that you've learned or languages that you're fluent in, uh, any kind of technical computer skills that you can operate, anything like that that shows you technical things that you can do that are going to be different from other white students. Uh, some of the other experiences that you might have, specific internship experiences, volunteer experience. If you're an athlete, be sure to include your athletic experience. That's a great way to showcase leadership, uh, teamwork, things like that. And then finally, your campus involvement. So make sure that you, it'll be different for every single resume. Um, you want to make sure that these are highlighted and showcased through your experience and whichever is going to be the best fit for you to showcase what you do well. Finally, your next steps. So if you haven't started building a resume, one great place to start is to look in the Career Resume Guide. Uh, if you go to the Career Center website, it's on there. You can also get the career guides within the Career Center library. Uh, and that's a great place to get some tips, look through. There's examples that show you what your resume should look like. It's a great way to start uh, and think about how you're going to build that resume. Once you have your resume built, I'd encourage you to visit the Career Center you can get a career advisor to look at it or meet with your liaison and your liaison can also look at it uh, to get uh, uh, 
to give you feedback on how you might improve your, your request. So some of the common questions that we will see on resumes. Can my resume be longer than one page? So as an undergraduate, I would really encourage you to get your resume on one page. Um, one, you want to be sure that you put your best experiences on there. Um, you know, recruiters get a lot of resumes, and so having to flip through multiple pages might be difficult for them. So really concise one-page resume is going to be really effective use of your time. Um, I will say, you know, if you've had extensive work experience, or maybe you're a master's student um, that has had a little bit more experience, you may be able to have two page, but for the most part, as an undergraduate student, you're going to want to keep that resume to one page. Uh, second question is, should I use a resume template? Um, so in our career guides, we have some great templates for you to use to look at. I would encourage you to use them. Um, what I wouldn't encourage you to do is maybe pull a template off of, uh, off of Word and try to uh, just plug in your information. Uh, sometimes those don't work when you edit them later. Sometimes those take up a lot of space and they don't look that professional. So I would encourage you to really think about using our templates in the career guides and not trying to use other places. Oh, and that's all I've got today. <laughs> Thank you. And I encourage you to look at our other workshops uh, through the PRC workshop series.